Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today we're digging into Plug Power, specifically their Q3 2025 earnings and, maybe more importantly, their forward guidance. Exactly. Our goal here is to really break down the numbers for you, look at the big strategic shifts they're making, especially around liquidity, and, you know, figure out if their confidence holds up. Okay, let's jump right in with those Q3 results, because it really was a bit of a mixed picture, wasn't it? It absolutely was. On one hand, you had a slight beat on the adjusted EPS, came in at a loss of $0.12 per share. Right, which was better than the native dollars and 13 cent forecast. So what, like a 7.7% positive surprise there? Seems like they're managing costs a bit better. Yeah, that definitely points towards some uh, internal discipline, getting more efficient. But you have to look at the revenue side, too. And that wasn't quite as rosy? No, it came in at $177 million. The forecast was uh, closer to $187 million, so about a 5.5% miss there. Okay, so beat on earnings, miss on revenue. Usually, a revenue miss spooks the market. But the stock actually jumped, what up almost 12% after hours. Yeah, yeah, it did. Closed at $2.96. It seems counterintuitive at first glance. So what drove that optimism then? What were investors seeing past the revenue number? I think it really boiled down to liquidity and um, execution discipline, cash burn. That was the key metric here. Ah, okay. Management made a point of highlighting a really significant improvement there. They cut operational cash burn by more than half compared to Q2. More than 50%. Sequentially. Sequentially, yes. Down to around $90 million for the quarter. Oh, ah, okay. That is a big shift. It's huge. And for a company like Plug, you know, in this capital heavy hydrogen space, mm. showing that kind of control over cash outflow is critical. It tells investors they're serious about managing their runway. So the market basically said, OK, revenue slipped, but managing cash is more important right now. Pretty much. That discipline, execution, that signal of financial stability, that seems to be what fueled the stock surge more than the slight revenue miss. Got it. Okay, so that sort of sets the stage for their forward guidance. Let's talk about where they see things going. They reaffirmed the full year 2025 target. They did. Still aiming for $700 million in revenue for the full year. Which, given the Q3 miss we just talked about, means Q4 needs to be pretty massive. It does. It implies a very strong finish to the year. They're banking heavily on uh, equipment sales closing in Q4, especially in the electrolyzer segment. We can get into that more later. It sounds aggressive, though. Sticking to $700 million after missing Q3, is that confidence really warranted? Or is it setting up for another potential miss? Well, it's certainly ambitious, but it lines up with their longer-term profitability goals. They're still targeting EBITDA's positive results in the second half of 2026. EBITDA's positive. Yeah. Remind us why that specific metric, including the S for share-based expense, is important here. Right. So EBITDA says earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, amortization, and share-based expense. That last part, the share-based expense, can be really significant for tech companies like Plug. Because they use stock options and grants to compensate employees. Exactly. And it's a non-cash expense, but it can make gap profits look worse than the underlying operational performance. So focusing on EBITDA gives arguably a clearer view of the core business profitability before those compensation costs hit. And hitting that by mid-2026 is the big milestone. That's the benchmark they've set for themselves, yes. Transitioning to being a sustainable operation. And nearer term, they also stuck with the goal of hitting gross margin neutrality on an adjusted basis by the end of this year. What has to happen in Q4 for that? It's sort of a three-legged stool. Yeah. First, you need that high volume of equipment sales we mentioned, hopefully high margin ones. Second, the service business needs to keep performing well on margins. And the third leg? The fuel business, that's the big variable. They're expecting what they called a big step function improvement in fuel margins, specifically in Q4. A step function improvement sounds sudden. What's driving that expectation? A new strategic supply agreement seems to be the main driver mentioned. Hmm. Relying on a single new agreement for a big step function change in Q4 margins feels like introducing a fair bit of risk, doesn't it? What if it gets delayed or the terms aren't quite as expected? That's definitely the tension. You're right. It signals a strategic choice, though. They seem yeah. to be prioritizing getting those fuel margins up quickly via agreements rather than maybe the slower, more capital intensive path of only using their own early stage, higher cost production right now. So use agreements to bridge the gap and hit the margin targets faster. That seems to be the logic. They're even targeting getting the fuel business itself to break even around mid-2026, maybe sooner, leaning on these kinds of supply deals. It's a pivot to manage that near-term margin drag. 
Okay, let's shift to the other big strategic news, the stuff that really got people talking, asset monetization for liquidity. Right. This was probably the biggest headline item from the call. They announced a non-binding letter of intent, an LOI. An LOI to do what exactly? To monetize electricity rights. Specifically, rights they hold in New York and one other location. And they're doing this in partnership with a major U.S. data center developer. Hold on, electricity rights. Why does a hydrogen company have valuable electricity rights to sell off? It's a good question. It comes down to securing the inputs for hydrogen production. To run large-scale electrolysis, you need access to significant amounts of stable, ideally cost-effective electricity. Ah, so they secured access to power infrastructure at these sites before building out the full hydrogen plants. Exactly. And in places like New York, securing reliable grid access and the rights associated with that land is incredibly valuable, especially now with grid constraints and the power demands of things like AI and data centers. So they're selling those power access rights to a data center developer who needs them. Precisely. It's a way to unlock capital tied up in an asset that, while necessary for their original plan, isn't directly hydrogen technology itself. And the amount of liquidity they expect is substantial. Hugely substantial. Over $275 million. That comes from the sale itself, plus releasing restricted cash tied to those projects and avoiding future maintenance costs. Wow. $275 million plus. Yeah. Compared to a $90 million quarterly cash burn. That fundamentally changes their immediate financial picture. Absolutely. Management framed it as critical. It shores up the balance sheet, eases concerns about debt, and just gives them a lot more breathing room. It was clearly a major factor in that positive market reaction we discussed. And this deal had a direct consequence for another funding source, right? The DOE loan. It did. They announced their suspending activities related to the Department of Energy loan program. Why suspend that? Wasn't that supposed to be a big part of their funding strategy? It was, but this new liquidity deal basically makes it less essential right now. Pursuing the DOE loan involves a lot of administrative effort, specific requirements, and potentially restrictions. So with $275 million coming in, they can sidestep that process. It seems so. They can redeploy the capital they might have needed for matching funds and just focus management attention on what they see as higher return opportunities in their core hydrogen network rather than navigating the DOE process for that specific financing. It shows a real shift in capital allocation driven by this monetization. Interesting. Now, the partner in this deal is a data center developer. This also seems to open up a new market for plug power itself. Yes, and that's the other really significant strategic angle here. This partnership isn't just about selling rights. It positions Plug directly into the booming data center market. How so? By potentially supplying hydrogen fuel cells for backup power. Data centers need absolutely bulletproof, reliable backup power thank mission-critical facilities. And hydrogen fuel cells can offer that with zero emissions on site. Exactly. It's a perfect application. Resilient, clean power. And providing stationary power solutions like this is clearly a major focus area for the incoming leadership team. It's a smart entry into a high-growth, high-margin vertical that desperately needs green and reliable power solutions. Okay, so major strategic shifts there. But let's not forget the actual operations delivering the Q3 revenue. You mentioned the electrolyzer business earlier. Yes, Janico electrolyzers were the clear standout operationally. Revenue hit $65 million in Q3. That's a big jump sequentially, right? It is, a 46% increase from Q2. Really robust growth. It brings their year-to-date electrolyzer revenue up to $124 million. So they're well on their way to that $200 million target for the full year in that segment. Looks like it. And they highlighted a key deliver milestone that backs this up. Which was? Delivering the first 10 milliW Genico PEM electrolyzer unit to the GALP project in Portugal. Ah, uh, the big European project. So that's the one. It's the first part of a planned 100 milliW installation there. Getting that first unit delivered is significant, and they expect to ship most of the remaining 100 milliW before year end. So hitting that is pretty crucial for making their overall Q4 and full year numbers. Absolutely. It proves they can execute on these large, complex international deals. And looking beyond current deliveries, is the pipeline still strong for electrolyzers? Apparently so. They reiterated that the electrolyzer sales funnel is still around $8 billion. $8 billion. That's obviously a huge number compared to current revenues. It underscores the potential scale, definitely. 
and management emphasized that the quality of the projects in that funnel, the ones likely to actually proceed to a final investment decision, or FID, is improving. Any examples? They mentioned projects like Allied Green Ammonia in Australia moving closer to FID, which suggests real customer commitment on these large-scale deployments. Okay, good to see that momentum. What about the sort of legacy core business? Mm -hmm. Material handling forklifts and warehouses and such. Yeah, they noted some renewed strength there too, specifically renewed activity from their big pedestal customers. Meaning Amazon and Walmart? Primarily, yes. Two things seem to be driving that. First, probably the improved confidence in Plug's own financial stability that we've been discussing. These big companies want reliable long-term partners. Makes sense. And the second driver? Policy. The reinstatement of the investment tax credit, the ITC, for fuel cells, it now runs through 2032. Ah, so that gives those customers long-term certainty on the economics of deploying more hydrogen fuel cell equipment. Precisely. It de-risks the investment for them and likely encourages them to expand their fleets again now that plug looks more stable and the tax credits are locked in. All right, before we wrap up, we should touch on the leadership transition that's coming up. Yes, important context. Jose Luis Crespo is set to take over as CEO from Andy Marsh on March 1st, 2026. What's the key message for listeners about this change? Is it a strategy shift? Actually, the message seemed to be the opposite. It signals continuity. Cresco has been deeply involved in the current strategy, particularly overseeing the big scale-up in electrolyzer manufacturing and deployment, the very area we just highlighted as a strength. So his promotion basically endorses the current path, the mm -hmm. focus on growth, profitability, and this Project Quantum Leap execution plan. That seems to be exactly the signal. His background aligns perfectly with where the company is putting its strategic emphasis. And he even said uh, something like, our path to profitability will be powered by growth. Okay, reinforces that focus on scaling those key segments like electrolyzers and now stationary power while keeping that cost discipline we saw in Q3. That's the formula they're aiming for. So let's try and synthesize this for you, the listener. Q3 itself was mixed financially, but the big story wasn't really the quarterly numbers. No, it was much more about the strategic chess moves. Proving they could control cash burn was huge, and then executing this massive liquidity deal via asset monetization that really bought them stability and flexibility. Right, it allows them to double down on the growth areas, electrolyzers, data centers, without maybe the same level of immediate balance sheet pressure. Mm -hmm. The big immediate challenge, though, is hitting that $700 million revenue number for the year. Q4 execution is paramount. Absolutely critical. Okay, so for a final thought, this asset monetization, selling the electricity rights, it was clearly necessary for the liquidity boost today. But what's the potential long-term trade-off for you to think about? Well, consider that they described it as permanently signing over those rights. Getting that $275 million now was vital, no question. But giving up permanent control over potentially low-cost power access at those specific sites could, down the road, limit their options for their own large-scale hydrogen production there. So does it subtly push them more towards relying on third-party hydrogen supply agreements for their network in the future, hmm. rather than fully controlling their own production using the cheapest power they could secure? It might. It's a classic trade-off. Immediate financial health and stability versus potentially greater operational control and maybe lower production costs years down the line. Mulling over that balance short-term necessity versus long-term strategic flexibility in hydrogen production, that's something worth considering as you watch Clug Power evolve.